create these sorts of drag and drop activities where your students can fill in the text, um, but also not ruin any of the stuff you don't want them to mess with. So to show you this, I've started a new one on Punnett Squares. I created this one where students are going to be placing the different genotypes for the example inside these boxes. Now, I don't want my students to be able to click on any of this because I am concerned about them obviously uh, on accident deleting something. So what you do, once you've created everything you don't want students to access, so if I don't want them to click on any of this or be able to delete any of this, then I can come in and screenshot it. Whatever kind of device you have, you're just gonna screenshot just the PowerPoint slide itself. I like to keep this slide in case I need to make changes, so I will come in and add a new slide. I'll come up here to design, and we're gonna say background, and we're gonna pick a picture from file. I'm gonna go to my desktop, and I'm going to pick that screenshot I just took. We're gonna say insert, and now everything there is locked down. Now, according to my directions, um, I want my students to drag and drop each combo, so for this situation, I would bring these examples over um, and if I need to resize them, which I think I would want to so that they're not the same size, so I would copy and then I would bring them over oh, and that is not copying. Let's, let's copy and that way if you want to ensure that you give your students the only, like so these are the only choices to pick from. So they've got all of these. You could choose to box them in. Now, there is always a chance your students will delete these. Um, that's why they have that lovely undo feature, so hopefully they can take advantage of it. Now, if instead of wanting them to drag them, I want my students to maybe type in the answers, um, you can insert those kinds of text boxes. So if I come up here and say text box, if you notice it says click to add text, I'm just going to drag it and put it there and then I'm gonna copy it, put it there as well. I would obviously have to change my directions at this point, but this is why I encourage you to keep that initial master copy in case you need to go in and change your directions. I'm gonna say click to add text. If I'm concerned that my students might not see it, maybe I'll add highlight here. But now when my students come in, the only thing they can edit on this slide are these text boxes and they just come in and they are going to be able to come in here and replace it with the correct answer, hopefully. You can resize these in advance, like if you know you want them to be bigger text, if you want to center them, you can move them around so that this way when my students start typing in it, it takes the size of it as well. So obviously I did this with a Punnett square, I just made this out of a table. When I made my Bohr model one, I just copied in some circles. You can literally drag any sort of thing key thing is once you've made your so like this is my I would say this presentation I would want to rename it like teacher copy then I'm gonna make a copy of it and I'm gonna delete out all of these slides where I have made my things that you can still edit and then just give my students the student copy of the PowerPoint hope that helped and good luck making your drag-and-drop or interactive activities